Hello, I'm Jim Barber, the administrator at MC3 Church. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and share a short devotion today. One of my all-time favorite books, in fact, it ranks number three in my top 20, is What Child Is This by Caroline Cooney. The story takes place during the Christmas season. It points out a desperate need for miracles, joy, and hope, and it asks the question, is the spirit of Christmas strong enough to bring about the impossible? What a great question that is. Is the spirit of Christmas strong enough to bring about the impossible? As a Christian, there's this natural inclination, maybe even expectation, to answer this question boldly. Of course, it can do the impossible. But if I'm brutally honest, there's a smidgen of doubt. I know God can do the impossible, but I wonder, will He? Doubt is a natural part of life, and it doesn't make you any less of a Christian or seeker when your faith flounders. Let's face it, 2020 has been a hard year for most of us, personally and collectively. There's been a lot of darkness, and the light of the world has felt dim to say the least. It reminds me very much of the time in Israel before Christ came. For centuries, Israel had been hoping for, waiting on, expecting the Messiah to come. They waited and waited, and at some point the majority lost hope and they gave up on the idea. Then, when it was least expected, Christ showed up in a manger in Bethlehem. And when He did, our world changed forever. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas in 2020, I wish I could tell you that giving your life to Christ will solve all of your problems and that every thing will turn out splendidly the way it does in Christmas stories. But that's neither true, nor is it the point of Christmas. The greatest gift of Christmas is the hope that it gives us, the hope that came into this world with Christ and the amazing saving grace that comes with it. To my mind, the hope we have in Christ is truly the gift that keeps on giving. How we treat that gift, what we do with it, determines the true value. Like a lot of gifts that we receive, we can easily put aside the hope of Christmas and forget about, forget about it. Stick it in the back of a closet where it's out of sight or mind, or maybe set it someplace prominent as a reminder to deal with it later, except it just sits there, kind of like good intentions, day after day, month after month, until Christmas comes again and you've done nothing with the gift. Too often, that's exactly what happens to the hope of Christmas after Christmas Day. We stick it in a closet or ignore it. And then we're disappointed when life once again piles up on us with its busy chaos, uh, hard times, and the desperate moments. To make the most of the gift of Christmas, we need to intentionally seek it, like the wise men did. The wise men easily, they could have, they could have ignored the Christmas star, but instead they followed it and they encountered the greatest gift of all time. One thing I've learned through my faith journey is that God is always near. I may wander away, ignore Him, put distance between us, but He's always there when I seek Him. Jeremiah 29, 13 puts, puts this into perspective uh, very well, I think. It says, you will seek me and find me when you, when you seek me with all your heart. Seek with all of our heart and we shall find. So how do we do that? It's simple, actually. Pray, read the Bible, fill our mind with godly thoughts and pursuits. It's amazing how these small things can transform our life. The book I mentioned earlier, What Child Is This? It tells of searching for a way to fill what has been described for centuries as a God-shaped vacuum in our hearts. It's a vacuum, on, a vacuum only God can fill and hope is central to the premise. As one of the story's main characters discover, there is no such thing as false hope. Hope is just it just is. Every morning, every night, hope doesn't guarantee, hope doesn't promise, hope doesn't do a thing. But you know what? You have to have hope. Choosing to believe in the hope of Christmas doesn't change our circumstances. A loved one may die, someone or something may hurt you in ways that you can't even imagine. You may get diagnosed or re-diagnosed re with cancer. Indeed, the darkness of this world can easily suffocate us if we let it, but we overcome that darkness with the light of the world that came down at Christmas more than 2,000 years ago. God gave us an amazing gift at Christmas. If we're wise, if we're wise, it's a gift that we will seek, ponder, and treasure all year. And when we do that, it will fill us with a joy that transcends all of our circumstances and grants us the promised peace that surpasses all understanding.